All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. How to Get What You Want by Wallace D. Waddles. Chapter 1. Getting what you want is success, and success is an effect coming from the application of a cause. Success is essentially the same in all cases. The difference is in the things the successful people want, but not in the success. Success is essentially the same whether it results in the attainment of health, wealth, development, or position. Success is attainment without regard to the things attained. And it is a law in nature that like causes always produce like effects. Therefore, since success is the same in all cases, the cause of success must be the same in all cases. The cause of success is always in the person who succeeds. You'll see that this must be true, because if the cause of success were in nature, outside the person, then all persons similarly situated would succeed. The cause of success is not in the environment of the individual, because if it were, all persons within a given radius would be successful, and success would be wholly a matter of neighborhood. And we see that people whose environments are practically the same, and who live in the same neighborhood, show us all degrees of success and failure. Therefore, we know that the cause of success must be in the individual and nowhere else. It is therefore mathematically certain that you can succeed if you will find out the cause of success and develop it to sufficient strength and apply it properly to your work. For the application of a sufficient cause cannot fail to produce a given effect. If there is a failure anywhere of any kind, it is because the cause was either not sufficient or was not properly applied. The cause of success is some power within you. You have the power to develop any power to a limitless extent, for there is no end to mental growth. You can increase the strength of this power indefinitely, and so you can make it strong enough to do what you want to do and to get what you want to get. When it is strong enough, you can learn how to apply it to the work and therefore you can certainly succeed. All you have to learn is what is the cause of success and how it must be applied. The development of the special faculties to be used in your work is essential. We do not expect anyone to succeed as a musician without developing the musical faculty. And it would be absurd to expect a machinist to succeed without developing the mechanical faculty, a clergyman to succeed without developing spiritual understanding and the use of words, or a banker to succeed without developing the faculty of finance. And in choosing a business, you should choose the one which will call for the use of your strongest faculties. If you have good mechanical ability and are not spiritually minded and have no command of language, do not try to preach. And if you have the taste and talent to combine colors and fabrics into beautiful creation in millinery and dress, do not learn typewriting or stenography. Get into a business which will use your strongest faculties and develop these faculties all you can. And even this is not enough to ensure success. There are people with fine musical talent who fail as musicians with good mechanical ability who fail as carpenters, blacksmiths, and machinists, with deep spirituality and fluent use of language who fail as clergymen, with keen and logical minds who fail as lawyers, and so on. The special faculties used in your work are the tools you use, but success does not depend alone on having good tools. It depends more on the power which uses and applies the tools. Be sure that your tools are the best and kept in the best condition. You can cultivate any faculty to any desired extent. The application of the musical faculty causes success in music. That of the mechanical faculty causes success in mechanical pursuits. That of the financial faculty causes success in banking and so on. And the something which applies these faculties or causes them to be applied is the cause of success. The faculties are tools, and the user of the tools is you, yourself. That in you which can cause you to use the tools in the right way, at the right time, and in the right place, is the cause of success. 
What is this something in the person which causes him to use his faculties successfully? What it is and how to develop it will be fully explained in the next section, but before taking that up, you should read this section over several times so as to fix upon your mind the impregnable logic of the statement that you can succeed. You can, and if you study the foregoing argument well, you will be convinced that you can, and to become convinced that you can succeed is the first requisite to success. Chapter 2 The faculties of the human mind are the tools with which success is attained, and the right application of these tools to your work or business will do it successfully and get what you want. A few people succeed because they use their faculties successfully, and the majority, who have equally good faculties, fail because they use them unsuccessfully. There is something in the man who succeeds which enables him to use his faculties successfully, and this something must be cultivated by all who succeed. The question is, what is it? It is hard to find a word which shall express it and not be misleading. This something is poise, and poise is peace and power combined. But it is more than poise, for poise is a condition, and this something is an action as well as a condition. This something is faith, but it is more than faith, as faith is commonly understood. As commonly understood, faith consists in the action of believing things which cannot be proved, and the something which causes success is more than that. It is conscious power in action. It is active power consciousness. Power consciousness is what you feel when you know that you can do a thing and you know how to do the thing. If I can cause you to know that you can succeed and to know that you know how to succeed, I have placed success within your grasp. For if you know that you can do a thing and know that you know how to do it, it is impossible that you should fail to do it if you really try. When you are in full power consciousness, you will approach the task in an absolutely successful frame of mind. Every thought will be a successful thought, every action a successful action. And if every thought and action is successful, the sum total of all your actions cannot be failure. What I have to do in these lessons, then, is to teach you how to create power consciousness in yourself so that you will know how, so that you will know that you can do what you want to do, and then to teach you how to do what you want to do. Read again the preceding section. It proves by unanswerable logic that you can succeed. It shows that all that is in any mind is in your mind. The difference, if any, being in development. It is a fact in nature that the undeveloped is always capable of development. We see then that the cause of success is in you and is capable of full development. Having read this, you must believe that it is possible for you to succeed. But it is not enough for you to believe that you can, you must know that you can. And the subconscious mind must know it as well as the objective mind. People have a way of saying, he can who thinks he can. But this is not true. It is not even true that he can who knows he can, if only the objective mind is spoken of. For the subconscious mind will often completely set aside and overcome what is positively known by the objective mind. It is a true statement, however, that he can whose subconscious mind knows that he can. And it is especially true if his objective mind has been trained to do the work. People fail because they think objectively that they can do things, but do not know subconsciously that they can do them. It is more than likely that your subconscious mind is even now impressed with doubts of your ability to succeed, and these must be removed or it will withhold its power when you need it most. The subconscious mind is the source from which power comes in the action of any faculty, and a doubt will cause this power to be withheld, and the action will be weak. Therefore, your first step must be to impress your subconscious mind with the fact that you can. 
This must be done by repeated suggestions. Practice the following mental exercise several times a day, and especially just before going to sleep. Think quietly about the subconscious mentality which permeates your whole body as water permeates a sponge. As you think of this mind, try to feel it. You will soon be able to become conscious of it. Hold this consciousness and say with deep, earnest feeling, I can succeed. All that is possible to anyone is possible to me. I am successful. I do succeed, for I am full of the power of success. This is the simple truth. Realize that it is true and repeat it over and over until your mentality is saturated through and through with the knowledge that you can do what you want to do. You can. Other people have, and you can do more than anyone has ever done, for no one has ever yet used all the power that is capable of being used. It is within your power to make a greater success in your business than anyone has ever made before you. Practice the above auto suggestion for a month with persistence and you will begin to know that you have within you that which can do what you want to do. And then you'll be ready for the next section which will tell you how to proceed in doing what you want to do. But remember that it is absolutely essential that you should first impress upon the subconscious mind the knowledge that you can. Chapter 3 Having filled your mentality, conscious and subconscious, with the faith that you can get what you want, the next question is one of the methods. You know that you can do it if you proceed in the right way, but which is the right way? This must be certain. To get more, you must make constructive use of what you have. You cannot use what you have not. Therefore, your problem is how to make the most constructive use of what you already have. Do not waste any time considering how you would use certain things if you had them. Consider simply how to use what you have. It is also certain that you will progress more rapidly if you make the most perfect use of what you have. In fact, the degree of rapidity with which you attain what you want will depend upon the perfection with which you use what you have. Many people are at a standstill or find things coming their way very slowly because they are making only partial use of present means, power, and opportunities. You may see this point more plainly by considering an analogy in nature. In the process of evolution, the squirrels develop their leaping power to its fullest extent. Then a continuous effort to advance brought forth the flying squirrel, which has a membrane uniting the legs in such a way as to form a parachute and enable the animal to sail some distance beyond an ordinary leap. A little extension of the parachute jump of the flying squirrel produced the bat, which has membranous wings and can fly, and continuous flight produced the bird with feathered wings. The transition from one plane to another was accomplished simply by perfecting and extending functions. If the squirrels had not kept leaping further and further, there would have been no flying squirrel and no power of flight. Making constructive use of the leaping power produced flight. If you are only jumping half as far as you can, you will never fly. In nature, we see that life advances from one plane to another by perfecting function on the lower plane. Whenever an organism contains more life than it can express by functioning perfectly on its own plane, it begins to perform the functions of the next higher or larger plane. The first squirrel which began to develop the parachute membrane must have been a very perfect leaper. This is the fundamental principle of evolution and of all attainment. In accordance with this principle, then, you can advance only by more than filling your present place. You must do perfectly all that you can do now, and it is the law that by doing perfectly all that you can do now, you will be able to do later things which you cannot do now. The doing to perfection of one thing invariably provides us with the equipment for doing the next larger thing, because it is a principle inherent in nature 
that life continuously advances. Every person who does one thing perfect is instantly presented with an opportunity to begin doing the next larger thing. This is the universal law of all life and it's unfailing. First, do perfectly all that you can do now. Keep on doing it perfectly until the doing of it becomes so easy that you have surplus power left after doing it. Then by this surplus power you will get a hold on the work of a higher plane and begin to extend your correspondence with environment. Get into a business which will use your strongest faculties, even if you must commence at the bottom, then develop those faculties to the utmost. Cultivate power consciousness so that you can apply your faculties successfully and apply them in doing perfectly everything you can do now, where you are now. Do not wait for a change of environment. It may never come. Your only way of reaching a better environment is by making constructive use of your present environment. Only the most complete use of your present environment will place you in a more desirable one. If you wish to extend your present business, remember that you can only do it by doing in the most perfect manner the business you already have. When you put life enough into your business to more than fill it, the surplus will get you more business. Do not reach out after more until you have life to spare after doing perfectly all that you have to do now. It is of no advantage to have more work or more business than you have life to do perfectly. If that is the case, increase your vital power first. And remember, it is the perfection with which you do what you have to do now that extends your field and brings you in touch with a larger environment. Bear in mind that the mode of force which gets you what you want is life, and that what you want in the last analysis is only an opportunity to live more, and that therefore you can get what you want only through the operation of that universal law by which all life advances continuously into fuller expression. That law is that whenever an organism has more life than can find expression by functioning perfectly on a given plane, its surplus life lifts it to the next higher plane. When you put enough of yourself into your present work to do it perfectly, your surplus power will extend your work into a larger field. It is also essential that you should have in mind what you want so that your surplus power may be turned in the right direction. Form a clear conception of what you seek to accomplish but do not let what you seek to accomplish interfere with doing perfectly what you have to do now. Your concept of what you want is a guide to your energies and an inspiration to cause you to apply them to the utmost to your present work. Live for the future now. Suppose that your desire is to have a department store and you have only capital enough to start a peanut stand. Do not try to start a department store today on a peanut stand capital but start the peanut stand in the full faith and confidence that you will be able to develop it into a department store. Look upon the peanut stand merely as the beginning of the department store and make it grow. You can. Get more business by using constructively the business you have now. Get more friends by using constructively the friends you already have. Get a better position by using constructively the one you now have. Get more domestic happiness by the constructive use of the love that already exists in your home. Chapter 4 You can obtain what you want only by applying your faculties to your work and your environment. You become able to apply your faculties successfully by acquiring power consciousness. And you go forward by a concentration on today's work and by doing perfectly everything that can be done at the present time. You can get what you want in the future only by concentrating all your energies upon the constructive use of whatever you are in relation with today. An indifferent or half-hearted use of the elements in today's environment will be fatal to tomorrow's attainment. Do not desire for today what is beyond your ability to get today, but be sure you get today the very best that can be had. Never take less than the very best that can be had at the present time 
but do not waste energy by desiring what cannot be had at the present time. If you always have the best that can be had, you will continue to have better and better things, because it is a fundamental principle in the universe that life shall continually advance into more life and into the use of more and better things. This is the principle which causes evolution. But if you are satisfied with less than the best that can be had, you will cease to move forward. Every transaction and relation of today, whether it be business, domestic, or social, must be made a stepping stone to what you want in the future. And to accomplish this, you must put into each more than enough life to fill it. There must be surplus power in everything you do. It is this surplus power which causes the advancement and gets you what you want. Where there is no surplus power, there is no advancement and no attainment. It is the surplus of life above and beyond the function of present environment which causes evolution, and evolution is advancing into more life, or getting what you want. Suppose, for instance, you are in a trade or profession and wish to increase your business. It will not do when you sell goods or service to make the matter a merely perfunctory transaction, taking the customer's money, giving him good value, and letting him go away feeling that you had no interest in the matter beyond giving him a fair deal and profiting thereby. Unless he feels that you have a personal interest in him and his needs, and that you are honestly desirous to increase his welfare, you have made a failure and are losing ground. When you can make every customer feel that you are really trying to advance his interests, as well as your own, your business will grow. It is not necessary to give premiums or heavier weights or better values than others give to accomplish this. It is done by putting life and interest into every transaction, however small. If you desire to change your avocation, make your present business a stepping stone to the one you want. As long as you are in your present business, fill it with life. The surplus will tend toward what you want. Take a live interest in every man, woman, and child you meet in either a business or social way and sincerely desire the best for them. They will soon begin to feel that your advancement is a matter of interest to them and they will unite their thoughts for your good. This will form a battery of power in your favor and will open ways of advancement for you. If you are an employee and desire promotion, put life into everything you do. Put in more than enough life and interest to fill each piece of work. But do not be servile, never be a flunky, and above all things, avoid the intellectual prostitution which is the vice of our times in many trades and most professions. I mean by this the being a mere hired apologist for and defender of immorality, graft, dishonesty, or vice in any form. The intellectual prostitute may rise in the service but he is a lost soul. Respect yourself. Be absolutely just to all. Put life into every act and thought and fix power consciousness thought upon the fact that you are entitled to promotion. It will come as soon as you can more than fill your present place in every day. If it does not come from your present employer, it will come from another. It is the law that Whosoever more than fills his present place must be advanced. But for this law, there could be no evolution and no progress, but mark well what follows. It is not enough that you should merely put surplus life into your business relations. You will not advance far if you are a good businessman or employee, but a bad husband, an unjust father, or an untrustworthy friend. Your failure in these respects will make you incapable of using your success for the advancement of life, and so you will not come under the operation of the constructive law. Many a man who fulfills the law in business is prevented from progressing because he is unkind to his wife or deficient in some other relation of life. To come under the operation of the evolutionary force, you must more than fill every present relation. A telegraph operator decided to get away from the key and get into a small farm, and he began to move in that direction by being good to his wife. He courted her without any reference to his desire, 
and from being half indifferent, she became interested and eager to help. Soon, they had a little piece of ground in the edge of the town, and she raised poultry and superintended a garden while he pounded the key. Now, they have a farm, and he has obtained his desire. You can secure the cooperation not only of your wife, but of all the people around you by putting life and interest into all your relations with them. Put into every relation, business, domestic, or social, more than enough life to fill that relation. Have faith, which is power consciousness. Know what you want in the future, but have today the very best that can be obtained today. Never be satisfied at any time with less than the best that can be had at that time, but never waste energy in desiring what is not to be had now. Use all things for the advancement of life for yourself and for all with whom you are related in any way. Follow out these principles of action and you cannot fail to get what you want, for the universe is so constructed that all things must work together for your good. Chapter 5. Wealth culture consists in making constructive use of the people and things in your environment. First, get a clear mental picture of what you want. If your present business or profession is not the one most suitable to your talents and tastes, decide upon the one which is most suitable and determine to get into that business or profession and to achieve the very greatest success in it. Get a clear idea of what you want to do and get a mental concept of the utmost success in that business or profession and determine that you will attain to that. Give a great deal of time to forming this concept or mental picture. The more clear and definite it is, the easier will be your work. The man who is not quite sure what he wants to build will put up a wobbling and shaky structure. Know what you want and keep the picture of it in the background of your mind night and day. Let it be like a picture on the wall of your room, always in your consciousness, night and day. And then begin to move toward it. Remember that if you have not the fully developed talent now, you can develop it as you go along. You can surely do what you want to do. It is quite likely that at present you cannot do the thing you want to do because you are not in the right environment and do not have the necessary capital. But that does not hinder you from the beginning to move toward the right environment and from beginning to acquire capital. Remember that you move forward only by doing what you can do in your present environment. Suppose that you have only capital enough to operate a newsstand and your great desire is to own a department store. Do not get the idea that there is some magical method by which you can successfully operate a department store on a newsstand capital. There is, however, a mental science method by which you can so operate a newsstand as to certainly cause it to grow into a department store. Consider that your newsstand is one department of the store you're going to have. Fix your mind on the department store and begin to assimilate the rest of it. You will get it if you make every act and thought constructive. To make every act and thought constructive, everyone must convey the idea of increase. Steadily hold in mind the thought of advancement for yourself. Know that you are advancing toward what you want and act and speak in this faith. Then every word and act will convey the idea of advancement and increase to others, and they will be drawn to you. Always remember that what all people are seeking is increase. First, study over the facts in regard to the great abundance until you know that there is wealth for you and that you do not have to take this wealth from anyone else. Avoid the competitive spirit. You can readily see that if there is limitless abundance, there is enough for you without robbing anyone else. Then, knowing what is the purpose of nature that you should have what you want, reflect upon the fact that you can get it only by acting. Consider that you can act only upon your present environment and do not try to act now upon environment of the future. Then remember that in acting upon your present environment, you must make every act a success in itself, and that in doing this, you must hold the purpose to get what you want. You can hold this purpose only as you get a clear mental picture of what you want. Be sure that you have that. 
Also, remember that your actions will not have dynamic moving power unless you have an unwavering faith that you get what you want. Form a clear mental picture of what you want. Hold the purpose to get it. Do everything perfectly, not in the servile spirit, but because you are a master mind. Keep unwavering faith in your ultimate attainment of your goal, and you cannot fail to move forward.